One of my favorite methods to use during recording is cycle recording because you can set up a region to just record over and over and over again on a particular track. And in a previous tutorial, I showed you how to do that with MIDI information, but you can also do that with audio information. And this method will allow you to record take after take after take and then choose the take that you want to use, depending on a few factors. So let's go over this cycle recording process. The first thing that we'll have to do is define where in our timeline we want the cycle to start and start over again. And what we're going to do is use the left and right locators to do that. So I'm going to move my left locator to measure two by holding down the option button on my Mac keyboard and clicking the second measure. And then I'm going to go to the fourth measure and I'm going to hold down the command button on my Mac keyboard and click on measure four. Now the locators were moved directly to measures two and four because I have my snap app set to bar and the snap control is on. If you don't have the snap on, you can type J on your keyboard to enable or disable snap. Right now it's enabled. And then click on this setting and choose bar. That way your left and right locators will go directly to the bar lines. And that's really important. Now we have a cycle set up and we also have our cycle button turned on. Now this is the numeric keypad's forward slash key. So if you want to turn cycle on and off, you can either click that button in the transport panel or you can type the forward slash key on your numeric keypad. Now, there's a couple of settings over here on the transport panel that change the behavior of the cycle recording. The default is keep history, but if you click on keep history, that opens the audio record mode settings. And there's three different settings. We can choose keep history, or cycle history and replace, or just replace. And let me show you some examples of how these three audio record modes are different from one another. So let's choose keep history. What I'm going to do is just record some silence onto this track. And aren't you glad I'm not singing again? But we're going to do this cycle recording on the vocal track that has already been recorded. And I'm going to move my cursor to the left locator by typing one, on my numeric keypad. Now when I start the recording, I'll get the count off and then it will record through this cycle over and over again. So I'm going to type the asterisk on my numeric keypad to start the recording. Now you'll notice that the name of the event has something new in it. It says take five. That's because every time that cycle went around through the recording, it made a new take. So there are actually five different takes underneath this top region, which is take five. And the way that overlapping works on audio is quite different than MIDI. On a MIDI or instrument track, you can have multiple events on a single track layered one on top of the other and they'll all play. However, with audio, you can only have one audio file or one audio event on the top top layer playing back. For example, if I were to move, so click and drag that fifth take over, you can see that underneath there's a fourth take. You'll also notice something different about these take events. If you move your cursor over the top of an event or any event on that track, you'll see that they have little pinstripes going across them. Whenever you see those pinstripes, it means that there's an overlap. In other words, there's something underneath this particular event. And to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to click and drag take four out of the way. And then I'm going to click and drag take three out of the way. 
you can see that all of those take events have events underneath, and that's denoted by these pinstripes. In other words, you don't see the pinstripes unless your mouse is hovering over the events. And with the magic of unlimited undo, I'm just going to hit undo, which is command Z a few times to move all of those events back to their original positions. And so that is keep history. When you have keep history as your audio record mode, it will keep every single take that you record, leaving the last take audible. Now, let's talk about the other record modes. I'm going to hit undo to undo that recording, and then I'm going to change the keep history to cycle history and replace. Now, this will be quite a bit different. What's going to happen is instead of leaving the original audio event underneath, it's going to erase it. So I'm going to go back to my left locator position by typing 1 on my keypad, and now I'm going to record a few more takes in a cycle. So there's four more takes. Now, what's going to be different is if we were to move those events out of the way, we'll eventually get to the bottom, which doesn't leave the original audio event intact. Now, this is nice if you know you're just going to be recording over an area that you're not going to keep. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this later, but... The information is still there. It just moves it out of the way. This is part of the nature of non-destructive editing. But we'll get to that in another video. For now, let's just finish off the cycle record modes. And so just be aware that cycle history and replace will keep the history of all the takes, but replace what's underneath that layer. So again, using unlimited undo, I'm going to hit undo a few times to get back to the original recording without that cycle record information on the top. And I'm going to show you the last audio record mode, which is replace. In replace mode, it will still cycle, but it won't keep all of the takes. It will only keep the last take. Let me show you what I mean. that this audio event is called take three. We did go through three iterations of the take, but there aren't any pinstripes visible on this event, which means that there's nothing underneath it. If we were to drag it out of the way, you'll notice that there's nothing underneath. But now that we've dragged it and it's hovering over that previous audio event, we see the pinstripes. But to show you that it has replaced the audio underneath during the cycle record, that's why there's this gap. So if I drag that back, we can see that there aren't any pinstripes, there also aren't any takes underneath. And that's because the replace record mode replaces the audio event underneath, and it keeps only the last take. So by cycle recording, you can end up with individual takes that you can choose from. But Cubase 6 has a really cool new feature called comping. And I'm going to show you how to use comping in the next video.